We all grew up with fairy tales, right? Well, my fairy tale sounded something like this. Three characters. Character number one. Te quiero mucho. <laughs> Character number two. Eres el amor de mi vida. No quiero vivir sin ti. Yo tampoco. And here comes the crisis. Character number three. <gasps> no, es horrible. Es injusto. Yo quiero estar con él. And just to rub in the drama a little deeper with character one, two, and three. Te amo. Te amo más. <gasps> no! That was my life. <laughs> when I was growing up, my mom had telenovelas on all the time. <laughs> telenovelas, you know, soap operas but they're even better. <laughs> so the telenovelas were my go-to dream world. They were my fairy tales. The romance, the melodrama, it incited my imagination. It was my escape from the real world. Escape. What better way to escape from the real world than by taking a road trip? That's right, this summer my family and I took an epic cross-country trip. Let me show you. From the clear blue waters of Crater Lake to the humongous redwood trees to the breathtaking Grand Canyon. Our voyage continued from June to August. Every road trip needs music, right? <laughs> well, that could be a little challenging for a family of five. I mean, our musical taste runs the gamut from rock to salsa to hip hop to reggae, so deliberations about what to listen to can go on and on and on. So, like the theater geek that I am, I popped in my favorite musical, Hamilton, which I had just recently seen. And to my surprise, my family loved it. <laughs> you know Hamilton, the most popular Broadway musical today with a record setting of 16 Tony Award nominations and winning 11 awards. This musical written by Lynn manuel Miranda uses hip hop and R&B to narrate the story of a less popular founding father, Alexander Hamilton, the man on the $10 bill. So Hamilton became our soundtrack for our road trip in search of the American dreamscape. Every time we set or collapsed our tent, my children would ask me, mommy, can we listen to Hamilton? And I was proud. I was proud that my children were connecting to a Latino Broadway performer who was also the composer, the lyricist, and the writer. I mean, when was the last time you saw that on Broadway? And not only that, but he was bringing in Broadway musicals like West Side Story, Sweeney Todd, and South Pacific in conversation with classic hip hop artists like Jay-Z, Tupac, and the Notorious B.I.G. And I was even prouder when my children put their own defiant flair to the rap, My Shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I ain't throwing away my shot. Because as the musical tells us, Immigrants get things done. And they're central to the history of America. 
And I think with all this anti-immigrant sentiment today, this verse affirms this nation's immigrant origin history. And that is the dose of medicine that Hamilton offers. As a first generation American from Ecuadorian parents who made their penny out of 50 cents by bringing home pieces of garments to sew for 10 cents a piece, I was proud that Hamilton affirmed that my parents and I, that we are part of America's fabric. So there was something special about watching my children rap along with Lynn Manuel Miranda, narrating the foundations of America while we were at a campsite, living the quintessential American dream of driving across the United States in search of nature's well-kept secret. And it took me back. It took me back to when I went to see Hamilton on Broadway. <sighs> Throughout the three-hour performance, the music entered my body, my head uh, bopping to the hip-hop beats. <laughs> my feet tapping to the polysyllabic rhymes seasoned by R&B flavor, held by clave punctuations. I was listening to an Afro-diasporic soundscape. Ah, and the sight, the sight of seeing our largely black and Latino cast of amazingly talented performers who reflected contemporary America deeply, deeply moved me. It was like a dream come true, a fairy tale. But all fairy tales must come to an end. And as the performance of Hamilton came to an end, I wiped the tears away. You know that moment when you realize that you're in public and you're crying, so you quickly wipe the tears away and you self-consciously look around you? And as I was looking around, I noticed the audience, a predominantly white, middle-aged audience who was as proud and as inspired and as emotionally moved as I was. And I contemplated for a moment on my feelings and wondered whether or not my fellow spectators were reading Hamilton in the same way I was, with respeto to difference. And then my American fairy tale turns into an American nightmare when my daughter asks me, Mommy, do you know what I want to be for Halloween? And I think, muchacha, it's summertime. Why are you thinking about Halloween? <laughs> yes, tell me. I want to be one of the Shiler sisters, Angelica Shiler. And as I hear, my daughter's wishes. I get this awful, visceral, gut feeling. What have I done? Why does my daughter want to be Angelica Shiler? my beautiful, brown-bodied, 10-year-old Latina want to be a slave owner, an accomplished woman in her own right. But a slave owner? 
I realized I had to wake up from my Hamilton fairy tale where America is the model of practicing equality and democracy in exceptional ways. I had to wake up from this Hamilton fairy tale and pull my daughter out of it. The harmonious and democratic America that we see on stage is what we aspire to be. But it's not our current reality yet. The mass incarceration of people of color, the high percentage of death by cops of young minority men in the hands of law enforcement, the scrutiny faced by gays and transgendered people, that is our current reality. Lynn manuel Miranda puts a colorful America on stage so that we can imagine the possibilities. And in envisioning the possibilities, we can have difficult conversations about race and racism, the reason why I stand here before you today. To see our colors on stage and to hear us speak our language, that is what profoundly moved me. So let's imagine for a moment, like Lynn manuel Miranda asks us to do. Let's imagine. Did you know today in Richmond here that the Tony Award musical is running, 1776? 1776 is just like Hamilton. It celebrates the history of America, but this time through the lens of John Adams. Now let's imagine for a moment if the cast was as diverse as the rich population of Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. What if the cast included Native Americans, Asian Americans, Blacks, and Latinos? Did you know the highest growing population in Richmond is the Latino community? Yet Latinos are still the most neglected historical group in the Commonwealth whose presence predates American independence. So if we can imagine for a moment this diversity, then we can talk about who is excluded. And if we understand that, then we can begin to practice inclusivity with intentionality. Richmond needs to break the black and white binary. It needs to see itself as a multicultural city. For the first time, Richmond is acknowledging the presence and contributions of Latinos in Richmond with an exhibition called Nuestras Historias, Our History, which will open up at the Valentine, July 2017. That is the narrative that my daughter needs to witness. She needs to see herself in Richmond. She needs to hear the voices of people who look like her. If she doesn't, it is harmful and damaging to her, and that is the reality she lives in now. So no. No, mama. You can't be Angelica Schuyler. The woman that you hear and who performs Angelica Schuyler is the virtuous African-American performer, Renee Elise Goldsberry. And what you love about her 
is the Destiny's Child Desk R&B soul she brings to that character. Aspire to be Dolores Huerta, Angela Davis, Malala Yusha Spy, liberators, not oppressors. So I invite you, yes, to imagine, imagine, dream the American dream, but then take it one step further and push it into reality. Because we've come someplace, but we still have not gone where we need to go. Because, mija, you are an American. I'm an American. We are Americans. And that is not a fantasy. That is a reality we need to reckon with. Thank you.